Hello, today I'm going to talk a little about the reactions behind corrosion and how those interact with the methods you can use to detect the corrosion activity. Looking at the image on the screen now, you can see that in order for corrosion to begin, you have to have water and oxygen at the level of the reinforcing. You also require the ingress of chloride, salts. The reason the ingress of chloride is required is that reinforcing bars in concrete are surrounded by an alkaline environment which forms a passive coating on the reinforcing bar preventing corrosion. This is why concrete and steel work so very well together. The chlorides which diffuse slowly into the concrete or travel quicker along a crack or other break, break down this passive coating and allow corrosion to begin. When corrosion begins you will find that an anodic and a cathodic site form on the surface of the reinforcing. This is because corrosion is an electrochemical process and causes a current to flow through the reinforcing. This is represented by the electron passage shown on the lower half of the screen through the reinforcing. On the other, at the cathodic site, this produces, when interacting with hydrogen and oxygen, hydroxide ions. These ions complete the circuit and move to the anodic site where they combine with the loose iron ions, Fe++, to create iron oxide and other corrosion products. These products are expansive, so you see the indicative spalling, cracking and delamination at the side of the corrosion when it progresses enough. So it's this current and in particular which we want to, uh, which is going to be what we're looking for with our testing method. The half cell potential testing looks for the voltage change as in the active areas. Now how can we assess corrosion? Physical uh, assessment is well is highly mature at the moment and you're looking for re uh, delaminations or cracks or any other damage. Drummy test is simply, as you know, tapping. Now the best protection against corrosion is the thickness of your concrete cover and the quality of it. And the concrete quality also affects the time to corrosion. You, there's going to be some diffusion of chlorides and other corrosion activators no matter what you do. But if you have good quality concrete with thick cover, it's going to take significantly longer to reach the reinforcing, during which time there will be no corrosion. It's possible to monitor the rate at which this front of chloride or carbon dioxide or other corrosion initiators travel. This can be done using probes, which are steel electrodes embedded at various heights in the concrete cover. And when the front reaches them, they will begin to corrode. This can be monitored electrically. It's also possible to determine it through destructive testing by taking carbonation depths through cracking cores and using indicators or chloride profiles through drilling and sampling. Finally, it's possible to look for where corrosion has begun using electrical methods. Uh, one reinforcement electrical potential, that's half cell potential testing, is what the Kanan and the Cori map are for. Concrete resistivity is primarily a measure of concrete quality and, diffuse, and, uh, the, diffuse, and uh, the permeability. It correlates very well to rapid chloride penetration tests. And linear pulveriz polarization and galvanostatic pulse are measures of the corrosion rate. Nothing is going to measure how corroded a bar is, but you can determine how likely it is that it's corroding in certain areas of your concrete structure and the rate at which it's corroding, so the rate that you're going to lose metal. Potential field measurement. This is half cell potential measurement. As, as I talked about previously, the reference electrode is applied to the surface of the concrete and the voltage is measured. The more negative the voltage, the more likely corrosion is. And as you can see, the voltage induced by the current flow at the anode is progressively lower the closer you come to the anodic site. So looking at the graph, we see where corrosion activity activity is occurring, we have a negative minus 300, minus 400 value, whereas where it's passive, it's negative minus 100. Now, half cell potential testing can be done with mapping using either the Kanan or the Cori map. As we can see here, we have a map where the yellow areas mean potential corrosion, uh, low negatives, minus 50 to minus 200, so um, the white areas are areas where it's greater than minus 50, so that would mean there would be no corrosion under standard assumptions. You need to make your own assumptions for each structure you look at. And when you're getting to the green or the red areas, 
you're seeing it where it's very likely corrosion has begun. And as, as mentioned on the slide, you're looking for hot spots. You're not, you want to establish the baseline of your structure and then look for areas where, the cor where corrosion appears to be actuating by looking at areas that are highly, more negative than that. Now some more guidance. As you can see, if you have saturated concrete, you can have very negative values, which at the same time aren't corroding. So whenever you're forming opinions about the likelihood of corrosion, you need to be very aware if you've got wet or dry concrete, what season it is, and, mo and compare like to like. Best to, look, as I said, always look for the hot spots. Finally, this is a diagram demonstrating galvanostatic pulse measurement. Galvanostatic pulse measurement is a corrosion rate analysis. It is conducted by imposing a current into the concrete and measuring how this changes the voltage over time. That's polarization, and the measure gives you a corrosion rate, which in combination with the likelihood of corrosion lets you, deter uh, lets you determine very well where corrosion is likely to be occurring and where the most at-risk areas are. It's also a method that can be used in concrete structures that are very wet or saturated, where you would be unable to conduct normal half-cell potential testing. Thank you for your time.